A CRY FROM EGYPT CHAPTER 7 PART 2 After breakfast the next morning, Etan and Father left to go talk to the elders. They came back bearing good news. Yahweh has put a division between us and the Egyptians. He said so through Moses, who told that to Pharaoh. Pharaoh laughed and didn't believe that a swarm of flies was coming. But now he's shocked and stunned. He called Moses before him this morning and sent Moses out to make supplication for him and his household. Pharaoh said that if the insects went away, he would let our people worship in the wilderness, Father said. Do you really think he'll let us go, Father? Shana asked. Father shook his head. No, Shana, I highly doubt it. But perhaps Yahweh is softening the Pharaoh's heart at last. We must wait and pray. Hey, before we go on with this book, I just want to let you know, I want to give this copy away free. What I'd like you to do is go down in the description and look for my email address. Send me an email, say you want it. And then we'll pick somebody randomly. Contact you, get your address, and send it off to you. So, now we'll continue. Moses and Aaron walked down the rich red carpet. You wish to see us, Pharaoh? Aaron asked as Moses' spokesman. Yes, I see that the flies have left. Pharaoh, proud, young, and strong, looked out through the great windows into the land of Egypt, his kingdom. The pharaoh chuckled low and menacingly. Tell your people that work resumes tomorrow. Tomorrow? But my lord, you promised that we could go to the wilderness and worship Yahweh. We told you we could not worship in front of your people for fear of being stoned, Aaron exclaimed. He was trying to be respectful, but wrath shone in his dark eyes and his face was turning red. Moses' face was immovable, the pharaoh noted with a twinge of annoyance. This Moses seemed to be calm in everything. Well, I have changed my mind, the pharaoh shouted. He stared the two men down with deep, penetrating eyes. Three days is too much time for your people to go away. More crops need to be planted. No, you may not go, and nothing you say, can change my mind. Now go. Aaron was about to protest, but four soldiers surrounded the two men and practically forced them out of the door. Yes, Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh murmured darkly. A couple of magic tricks won't move the power of the almighty Pharaoh. It'll take more than a weakling god to do that. With a smug, and defiant face, Pharaoh snapped his fingers for his attendants. This was going to be a long, busy day, and he was ready for anything that came his way. Or so he thought. What? Jara was jolted from her sleep, her heart pounding. Who had called out? How could this happen? A voice shrieked. Jara turned to see her mother plop down on a stool, her face in her hands. Early morning light shone through the windows. Father and Lemuel stood in the doorway, sad looks on their faces. Father, what's happened? Itan asked, slowly rising from his bed. Father looked down at the ground, his eyes sad. This morning, all the Egyptian cattle were found dead. Jara's jaw dropped open. Tirza, who had been awakened by her mother's cries, gasped. What? How? Shana cried. Father shook his head. No one knows. Seems like it's some strange disease. Lemuel, what about our cows? Are they? Tan's face was white. No, they're fine. When I heard what had happened, I ran to check on them. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong with them. Once again, Yahweh has brought destruction on the Egyptians, Father said quietly. It's terrible to see so many people suffer 
because of Pharaoh's hard heart. But Father, doesn't this mean we don't have to work today? Jara asked hopefully. I don't know. We can't perform some of the tasks we usually do if we don't have cattle, but they might find other things for us to do. Mother suddenly looked up, her eyes flashing. Is that all you're worried about? Work? Don't you see what is happening? The Egyptian gods are under attack. Our sacred cattle have been killed. Who's doing this? How can the gods let this happen? Mother was so angry, she was crying. Mariel, calm down. I, calm down, Mother shrieked. Tirza clutched Jara's arm, trembling. No, Asher, this is terrible. This is horrible. I'm going to pray. Mother stormed from the hut and disappeared behind the house. There was a long, terrible silence. Well, Lemuel finally said softly, Mother's right. The Egyptian gods are being attacked. But we, unlike her, know who's attacking them. Yahweh is. Jara thought about what Lemuel had just said and realized so far every plague had been a direct attack against the Egyptian gods. First, the sacred Nile. Then the goddess Hagat. Then the insects that they held sacred. And now the cattle. Amazing, she murmured. Asher, Amazi stood in the door. We still have to work today. Your family better get moving. He was clearly irritated. The pharaoh's so stubborn. He said he's going to import some cattle as soon as possible. And he'll probably be using some of our cattle too. Now hurry up. I'll be back soon with specific instructions. Amazi left and father sighed again and shook his head. Quickly, children, let's see if there's any bread left from yesterday, he said, grabbing a pitcher of water and putting it on the table. I'm afraid that we'll be slaves until Egypt is utterly destroyed, he finished, almost as if he was talking to himself. You mean we'll never be free? Raphael's lip began to quiver, and Jara could see a tear in his eye. I don't know, Raphael, father replied, sitting down despondently on a stool and wiping the hair from his brow. Yahweh is obviously at work, but Pharaoh's heart is hard and stubborn. I'm not sure when Yahweh will change Pharaoh's heart or what he's going to do next, but we know that he is listening to us and really does care about us. He doesn't listen or care, a defiant voice called out. Mother was standing in the doorway, her eyes still snapping, her face red with anger. He doesn't listen at all. That's what I've been telling you for the past few days. We must pray to the Egyptian gods for freedom and deliverance. But mother, why would the Egyptian gods let us go? Questioned Etan. They obviously have the power and they know that the Egyptians are in the wrong. That's why all this is happening, Mother stated proudly. Marielle, we've discussed this before, Father began, but she interrupted him. The Egyptians are obviously more powerful than we are, so it has to be something about their gods. But Marielle, Father said calmly, why would the gods who have given the Egyptians great power give us great power too? For if all the Israelites left, Egypt would certainly lose almost all of its power. You see, they really can't do anything. They aren't real gods. You see how useless they are to the Egyptians even now? Yahweh is the real God. Mother stood staring blankly at her husband. She didn't have anything else to say. Reluctantly, she turned away, leaving the conversation unfinished. Father, do you think anything will soften Pharaoh's heart? Jara queried, setting some bread on the table. Yahweh only knows, Father replied with a gesture of his hand upward toward heaven. But there's always hope. I haven't given up yet. It's just amazing how severe these plagues are. I know they are sent from Yahweh, and I know that he is looking out for us. Now hurry up. We need to eat before Amasi comes back. 
If father thinks there's hope, then I won't give up either, Jara told herself decidedly. Not yet, anyways. And that's the end of the chapter. We'll go on with chapter eight in the next video. Don't forget what I said about down in the description, the email address. Let me know you want it. And as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. I love you guys. Bye-bye.